the quest to alter the power relations in society in favor of the excluded and marginalized masses of our people has failed. The high political and social ideals of those of us who are part of our glorious struggle have by and large come to naught. We all knew that we could not change the trajectory of inequality and poverty without a competent, bold, developmental state. We paid continuous lip service to the kind of state and governance we deserved and did little or nothing about it. And look at us now, a perilous, weak state. We have seemingly emerged from ghastly revelations of state capture, or have we? But think again, as I read what you journalists write often, what you still investigate and disclose, virtually every other state or provincial departments is a site of pillaging and corruption. It is a site of crime against our people. How could it be that so many departments and its leaders and workers are being investigated for this extensive thuggery that extends to billions of rands? Every other municipality faces inability to perform its most basic statutory obligations. It cannot be that the post-state capture revelations of misgovernance accountability would abound ever so much. Our circumstances of governance appear truly dire. It seems plain that journalists will have to continue to do their damnest to investigate, to inquire, and to inform of these high levels of misgovernance that seems to be accompanied by a lack of care and empathy by public leaders. I do not mean the empathy of politicians trotting out before your cameras when they visit families of victims of this unending avalanche of violence and crime in our society. I'm talking about real caring that any leader ought to have. 2022 has been a year of many events. It's been a tumultuous year for our industry. It's also the year where we saw a journalist being dragged to court and charged in a private prosecution for merely doing her job. And this is, for most of us, the first time that we witness something of that nature in a post-democratic South Africa. And with that, I want to make it clear tonight, as we have made it, as we have said before, as the South African National Editors Forum, we stand with our colleague, Karen Mon. And as I said, the news cycle has been an overdrive and it's been quite unrelenting. And we thought with the July unrest that we'd seen it all. But then we woke up on the second day of this year to our, parliament, to our building of parliament on fire. And I think that has set the tone for this year, ladies and gentlemen. And one can say that the sight of a burning parliament was perhaps a metaphor for the crossroads that we find ourselves in in this country.